there's something going on with him. I don't do centimeters, I do inches, even though I'm Canadian, I know it's weird. I think Coco's gonna lose its black. Good morning, it's Sunday. I just finished, well, I finished hanging out with Billy for like five minutes. He, he brings me so much joy. Everybody needs a Billy. I'm so glad I kept him. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to check on those lambs that, uh, that lamb that has that little bit of joint ill and I treat it again. It's a five day, I'm doing it for five days to see how it comes along. And I'm also grabbing a bottle that those, those, uh, that set of triplets last night before I departed, uh, I was able to give two of them a little bit, like a hundred mils. So they aren't quite getting what they need. So I'm just supplementing them. I'm hoping she'll come into her milk a little better. I'll gauge it by how much of a bottle they drink from me. If every day that increases, I will have to pull those lambs off. If every day that decreases, I will leave the lambs on because they're obviously drinking enough from mom. Mark just headed back out to the field for back at corn planting. It is beautiful outside, like summer weather. We haven't had this yet. And then I want to plant, the last thing I want to plant in the garden, we just ran out of time last night, is I want to get those beets in. And then the, that's it for the garden until it warms up. It's supposed to be really cold this week. Mark is not happy. Uh, it's supposed to, they're calling for snow and like a low of zero or even minus one next Monday. So he's really, really, really nervous about his canola and the corn we have planted. And oh, this is the, this is the worst part of spring is when you get warm enough weather that you push and you get stuff in and then you have those chances of the weather going cold and it'll probably be our last cold stretch before it gets warm again but it's always such a stress i am gonna go for a ride with mark in the tractor and planter he's just coming up now So I just nicely got back from Mark. I just wanted to see, make sure he didn't need seed, but he nicely just got the headlands done. There's, I think he said 20 acres of headlands. So he's got uh, a, a ways yet before he needs me. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes here. Well, I'm gonna say a couple minutes, but it's probably gonna be more than that. I'm gonna plant the, another patch of potatoes and um, our beets. And I'm hoping the timing is right. Uh, for all this some of you are saying I should be waiting maybe till the maybe till the full moon uh, I'm just we're just we have so many that if it doesn't work out in a few weeks we can replant Mark bought enough to keep us gardening for probably 10 years so let's jump on the ranger this thing is handy it is so old we bought this I think in 2002 maybe I think it was the year I had Jess so 2002 and it's still going hard it's still the original bald tires but for gardening or for picking stones in the fields after we plant when he doesn't want any heavy equipment on it, it is a handy little thing. Yeah. Our 
Field of Dreams. Okay, if you remember yesterday, this is our lettuce. And we put it under boards to just conserve the moisture for a bit. And we have our onions here. I need some more labels, but basically we did one row of red onions and two rows of yellow. And then back, the second group are the, is the second 30 feet is potatoes. And then the third section is three rows of carrots at 30 feet. <laughs> and then the fourth section, the fourth 30 foot section is peas. So I think what Mark wants me to do is plant the beets here, if I'm not mistaken. Beets here. And then the last two are gonna be beans. The last one over there is going to be beans, and then I think that third 30-foot section in between the flags there, that is going to be just some more potatoes because we have a ton. He just wants to finish that bag. And then this 30-foot section here is going to be peppers, and this 30-foot section here is going to be tomato plants. So, and then we have sweet, we do have sweet corn, and I think he's going to plant it with the planter, and he's going to plant it right there. So yeah coming together. We'll see if it grows. Potatoes are going to go in this row. Let's see. Now I just got to Google how to grow them. So it's looking here that I have to plant them one centimeter deep, half an inch, and two to four inches apart in rows 30 to 45 centimeters. I don't do centimeters, I do inches, even though I'm Canadian, I know it's weird. Okay, uh, half an inch deep, two to four inches apart in rows a foot to a foot and a half apart. We can do that. So I am a bit of a nerd. I like to have stuff measured properly. Um, so yeah, we just lay this measuring tape down. I got a screwdriver holding this end. And so it said, yeah, plant two to four inches apart and a half an inch deep. So I can do that. So I'll put a row here and then I'll put a row a foot in the center of these two strings. The strings are two feet apart. So then I'll plant the second row there. I might just trench it first like Mark did yesterday. I think it's a little easier. Okay, so I dug just a little tiny little trench kind of right under my line there and then I'm just gonna plant the seed and then I'll just nicely roll the dirt right over it said only in half an inch deep so it'll be what it'll be it'll be pretty close oh, goodness these are so small Ugh. this might just be a sprinkle because they're so small. Okay, now I'll just kind of the dirt in. It's very professional. Mark calls it controlled spill. repeat. Okay, my beets are planted. Now I got to move those strings. I'm going to take them from these stakes, that stake, and just move them over to these stakes. And it just helps us line stuff up so it's in a semi-straight row. When you're married to a row crop farmer, we have to have semi-straight rows.
just finished planting the potatoes and the beets and quite honestly I'm a little I'm, a, I'm warm <laughs> so I'm coming in here for a little bit of a cool off and also just to give you guys an update on uh, I know a lot of you have been asking about the breeding group and how they're doing when you use cedars for the breeding group they only breed for about three to four days and then there's nothing until their est their next estrus so their next heat cycle which won't be until I did the math I went and checked my daytime my calendar and the math looks like they should be back in heat if they didn't get serviced they should be back in heat next Saturday so about May I think that's May 9th dairy where are the third I think it's May 9th is when that would be day 17 and they should they should come into heat day 17 to day 21 on day 21 I take out the rams so they've only got to about May 13th to complete their duties so everybody's asking about that dud ram. Let's go have a look at it. I honestly haven't had a chance to even, because they don't breed, then I can't tell, right? But I, I can see if he ever did get pain on his chest. So let's go have a look. So that's him. Just want him to turn around. <laughs> Probably, buddy. He does definitely have a significant amount of wool loss, so. He might just, there might be just something going on with him. If it was lice, you'd think the other rams would be struggling too. I still don't see paint on his chest, no. So, I don't think, whereas you can see paint on his chest. I think that there's something going on with him. So it will be worth, if Rex comes to look at my billies, it will be worth him looking at uh, this ram again before that July breed and you know just see what's going on see how much wool has gone on his back end whereas this guy has no wool gone at all so that's just odd that the one would have if it was lice they would all have it so i would say he's had a fever or something something's happened to him i would say to lose that much wool the update with these ladies these are the ones that are due in june uh i texted charlie last week and they are due to be sheared hopefully this week because i have to get them vaccinated and hoof trimmed and i will you guys have been asking for a vaccination uh, schedule so what i'm going to do is draw one up uh on, on a nice sheet or maybe do it on a computer and do a video when I maybe when I hoof trim and vaccinate this group, I'll do a video and show you exactly when I vaccinate my ewes, uh, starting right when they're lambs, replacement ewe lambs. But yeah, so that's the schedule. They are due, uh, I think, around June 16th, in and around there. So they're, I like to get them sheared about six to eight weeks before they lamb, and we're already pushing, you know, six weeks easy maybe even five to six weeks. So I have to get those done. So that's the older ewes, the mature ewes. And these are the ewe lambs. This is, this is the thing about sheep. It is, it can be the hottest day that it's been all year and they will all congregate in one spot instead of spreading, spreading out. In this pen, that's the other, that's the ewe lambs that didn't catch that I'm going to wait to July to breed uh, just because it, it just made these groups too big for how many rams I had. So they're just getting like a hay, you can see what they're getting here, just a real low energy ration to keep their weight kind of in check. I don't want them getting too heavy because then it's hard to get, get them bred too. So they're on just a maintenance ration. They're on salad right now. And my boys, just loving life, just kings. Here's everyone's favorite little lamb, my little brown one. And that is a ewe lamb. And it's so sweet. So she will stay. She's chewing Ruby's ear tag. You wonder why they get ripped out. Rusty's not even caring that he's, she's standing on him. <laughs> They're getting big. Wow. Where's my Coco? Oh, there, she, there he is. Coco! Hello, Coco. Coco is loving life. I think Coco's gonna lose its 
black. Would not surprise me if that wool, so his head will probably stay black and legs will stay black, but I bet his torso will turn white. I guess he's all right. <laughs> he's getting big though. He's on his knees to reach. Yeah, he's gonna lose his, definitely gonna lose that black. I think, I think that's all gonna be white. He's having a good drink. That's a good mom. If they stay on that long, she's producing well. No, he's bunting, so she's, she's almost done. And let's see, there we go. <laughs> Cause another one was trying to steal. Coco's still holding on for dear life. Can you believe they're soon a month old? He has been on there for a while. How was that, buddy? Hey, how are ya? You just needed a drink? Oh, you're so cute. So cute, yeah. <laughs> you're my baby. You're still my baby. Still nothing from Big Mama. Hi, sweetie. You want a bottle? <laughs> hmm? <sighs> 300 mils. So they are hungry, so this is going to be a thing. I'm going to have to bottle feed them. So I did some thinking about why, uh, why Coco is turning white. I believe he had a suffolk sire. And uh, so if he is taking on more of the suffolk influence, uh, they do come out, some, some lambs come out very, very black and as they get older, they do turn white. So uh, I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he was, I'm gonna have to look at his baby picture, him and his, him and his uh, sibling and see what he was, but I'm pretty sure it's a suffolk sired lamb. So yeah, he's he's probably gonna lose his black wool. Ooh, it's kind of sad. I like his black his black wool, but I like him no matter what. Okay, let's see if he drinks. Yeah. Baby. So yes, now I have a couple bottle babies.